12. And I know that is a lot for a lot of people to take in. So, what is going on with our seagulls? Hello and welcome back and that is right today I want to talk again about the subject of TrueNAS. I did a whole one hour long review of TrueNAS Core version 12 which I appreciate is a lot for some of you. So what I wanted to do is comprise and condense it into this. Uh, should you download? Five reasons why you should consider integrating TrueNAS into your life and five reasons why you might want to give it a miss. Let's go straight on to reason one. Reason number one is probably the most obvious for a number of you, the cost. When it comes to integrating TrueNAS Core or TrueNAS Scale or any of these different little solutions from TrueNAS, formerly FreeNAS, built on FreeBSD, well, the big appeal for a number of you is the cost. When you are going to use an old PC that knocking around or build your own PC from scratch, your money is going into that. It's going into the hardware. When you look at solutions like this, known as off-the-shelf or turnkey solutions, these are solutions that when you buy them, they are hardware and software combined. The amount of money you are spending is leveraging towards both of those assets. And in some cases, like QNAP, you end up spending 60% of the money on the hardware and 40 on the software. In the case of Synology, the ratio is the other way but when it comes to true nas your money is going on the hardware alone and therefore you can be quite economical and quite targeted about how you want your budget to be spent because the software is open source and therefore it's not going to cost you any bumps for the most part there are little bits where there can be costs that we'll touch on later in the video but it has to be said that on the whole true nas true nas true nas core true nas scale whatever you want to call it is effectively free Of course, security, it is a big thing about TrueNAS, that although most NAS platforms, one way or another, are very, very secure in their own way, I think on points, and once you really measure it down and put all the details on paper, TrueNAS is probably one of the most secure platforms currently available for NAS. And that can be broken down to a number of reasons. First, there is the utility of the jail system, where when you are utilizing any new software or service to the system, it can be encased in a jail where it's interaction and access to the rest of the core system and your data and all the access privileges and more can be either severed at the touch of a button or never be there in the first place. It allows all of these individual rooms where things live to be completely partitional, something that although a lot of brands sort of deal with in containers and virtual environments, it is not as widespread and completely built into the architecture as it is in TrueNAS. The next thing, encryption. Encryption throughout the whole system is more diverse and more ranged on TrueNAS as than most other platforms with numerous encryption methods uh, available to you to select between not just the system saying do you want encryption the end but on top of that encryption and the layers and levels that can be put down to the volumes the VDEVs, the pools even uh, the support of encrypted drives is greater as well as well as the encryption system allowing things like passphrases so you don't have to be overly reliant on a downloaded key for the encryption TrueNAS has that in there uh, on top of that, you've got the idea that it's not built on Linux. Now, not being built on Linux has its own downfalls in terms of app support and containers and the like, but not being built on Linux means that on FreeBSD, Linux is constantly, constantly being bombarded by users to find vulnerabilities because it's utilizing everything from Android to a lot of devices in our homes. FreeBSD is more narrow in its overall um, coverage globally and therefore the vulnerabilities are not being as pounded upon and again because of it being in the case of TrueNAS completely API designed it means that when you want to point third-party services to the NAS in order to exchange data from things like databases on web servers and the like you can use API keys so you don't have to give those third-party services direct credentials that can affect the system. You can give it an API key that is a single pathway, a single layer switch between that software and the NAS and therefore not give that third-party software much power but do give it the information it requires. Overall, it's just a very, very secure platform. Even for being open source, it's really impressive. Another massively overlooked advantage there of the true NAS platform is its scalability. It's the idea that when you buy into some of the off-the-shelf you know, alternatives out there, again, I'm going to keep highlighting Solange and QNAP, but there's Asus, Doltera, Master, WD, there's loads. When you go towards them, expandability 
it comes at a, a far more constrained uh, element. Some systems can't be expanded at all. They don't allow it really in terms of uh, storage expansion. You can migrate to another system, such as going from a smaller Synology to a bigger Synology, but you're still within that ecosystem and it is more constrained in terms of its expandability. You can expand in terms of storage and migration, but it's still, you have to go on their path. And moving that data out of that ecosystem isn't that straightforward. It requires a lot more online sending. You can't just take a drive out of a Synology and ram it in another system. It doesn't work that way. Now, when it comes to the scalability of TrueNAS, firstly, migration is a great deal easier. One TrueNAS system, you can take the drives out of a TrueNAS system and pop it in a new one, and it will just view that storage as is. Next up, when it comes to migration between them or bolting on storage to an existing TrueNAS system, you don't have to just deal with one of those. You can attach multiple pre-existing RAID Zs and other storage pools to a new um, ZFS true NAS system that allows and has that infrastructure. Indeed, one of the biggest downfalls for a long time about true NAS and its RAID Z was the inability to expand an existing RAID pool with more drives. And as of summer 2021, it looks like that might not be a limitation anymore as it has been explored into, and I'm not sure if it's completely rolled out, that you can expand an existing uh, RAID Z with new drives. It's not the same as a normal um, um, expansion there, just banging the drives on. And what it will do is ultimately create a new separate parity area of storage with the new drives, which kind of sits parallel with the current one, but still allows you to see the full storage and it's a little bit less efficient, but still the ability to expand RAID Z and storage within your true NAS platform is now more possible and ultimately if not on the same par, but starting to rival that of existing NAS Linux systems. Next up, I touched on it there, ZFS, Zettabyte File System. ZFS is still, arguably, I think most storage experts agree, the best file system out there. Now, again, it's closely followed by the legacy and history of EXT4, and I think some users still have a mixed relationship over BTRFS, even though, once deployed right, can actually be a great file system. But back to file, uh, ZFS, in ZFS, you have so many inherent advantages there, such as copy on write, the idea that um, file self-healing and checking of things like um, miswrote data be noticed early doors and repaired at the right structure, thanks to that copy on write two methodology. On top of that, then you've got three disk parity and RAID Z3 supported there. Then you've got things like fast RAID building, taking minutes, not hours. And that goes for RAID rebuilding too, where when you re rebuild the RAID, it only has to build the areas where the data was on the disk. The rest, it just nulls out. And therefore, if you had a 10 terabyte storage system that only had one terabyte of data, unlike in an EXT, for RAID that would have to be build the entire thing for the most part. In a RAID uh, Z uh, scenario there, it will only need to build the areas where the data was on the disk, therefore a great deal faster. And that also extends to the support of RAID resilvering, where if, for one reason or another, a disk in your system becomes dismounted, either by a hardware fault, a software fault, or a physical disconnection like that, you can reintroduce that drive within a period of time, and it will see that that drive was part of the array and reintegrate it in minutes. Rather than in an existing EXT4 platform, what it would do in a standard RAID is it would have to wipe that entire disk and rebuild the whole RAID from its degraded state. Things like that are only really available in ZFS for the most part, and therefore, makes it very, very appealing in TrueNAS. And finally, actually covering another kind of third tier, and I mentioned this in my review of storage, is the idea that TrueNAS isn't just a DIY experience anymore. If you want to take advantage of all of this flexibility that I've talked about in TrueNAS, you don't necessarily have to start cluing up on things like ZFS and having to learn a lot more. It does have a steeper learning curve that I'll touch on later, but if the appeal of turnkey solutions from Synology and QNAP and Asus or Terramaster and stuff like that appeal to you because although they are um, uh, solutions where you're paying for the hardware and the software together, you're getting all of that support. I'm pleased to say that there is, of course, an option in that in TrueNAS from IX. Now, they're the ones that supplied this, the unit that was in that review. And this allows you to have all of those software advantages I mentioned in TrueNAS, but you're getting the hardware pre-built. You can get it pre-populated. You can get it with a flexibility of the uh, configuration from storage base to the CPU and memory inside with 
the software already pre-installed. This is a middle ground between open source DIY complexity of TrueNAS and turnkey solutions that are ready to rock out of the box from the likes of Synology and QNAP. The middle ground that allows you to have all of these software advantages but not have to start cluing up on how to build it yourself. And again, a lot of people aren't even aware that TrueNAS has a hardware arm to their business in IX systems. So I recommend you check them out. But it can't all be good, let's be realistic about this, nothing's perfect and in the case of TrueNAS there are some obvious downfalls to it for a lot of users and some less obvious ones out there. So let's go through five things that may well put you off going down the road of TrueNAS. This one's a real simple one, a lot of people just aren't even aware of this, but on TrueNAS there isn't really a file folder management interface in the graphical user interface. Now, let me explain what that means. With most other off-the-shelf solutions, and indeed, when you're using most software that's network storage, if you're looking at the likes of Dropbox, Google Drive, or any of that stuff, you go via the web browser, and you can see a graphical user interface there. You can see the files folders. You can copy, you can paste, you can share. You've got loads of domestic standard class um, options and configurations and control built into this file management window. Think Windows Explorer in your web browser. Now, TrueNAS doesn't have that. It supports a huge array of services for third-party clients. It allows you to uh, see the storage in Windows Storage Server, see it in Mac, not Storage Server, see it in Windows Explorer, see it in your Mac system, utilizing Finder, allowing you to see it in Linux. You can use it as an SMB, use it as a Mac drive, use it as a, a web dev, use it as a target device. So you can do all of that stuff. But you can't just access the files and folders via the web browser. You can see it in that breadcrumb thing, you know, when you go to a website and it's just a list on a white background there with no configuration or control. You can bolt it on to existing third party um, file folder management there within the web browser for certain supported services. But you can't just access your files and folders in the web browser, which can be can make all the difference when you're trying to access that files quickly and easily without having to rely on your connected third party share on your client if that drops, which can be really problematic and annoying when you just want to patch into the system. Same goes for sharing those files, copy, co extract, archive, all of that stuff. None of that stuff is available to do in a standard file folder interface in the web browser, which for a number of people that are used to not only having the remote access client, but also that soft, easy drop of a hat option, that can be really problematic for TrueNAS there. There are third party options out there to utilize that, but you shouldn't have to do that. Support, support, support. This is a big, big deal for a number of users that don't want to, you know, have, who don't have a system admin in-house, that don't have uh, tech companies or at least a NELS to be able to do a lot of things themselves. And TrueNAS is arguably more than any other platform reliant, heavily reliant, I might add, I hate seagulls, um, on community support. Now, what I mean by that is, that kind of can be broken down into several things. Firstly, the platform itself is first party storage all the way, everything else third party. Everything from the apps to the added connecting services are either third party apps available in the application center or require you to download third party apps on your client hardware, your PCs, your Macs, your Linux systems, whatever. Now, that isn't the end of the world, but it has to be said that when you are lost or you don't know what you're doing or you need to do troubleshooting, you're left with two main options in TrueNAS. One, scouring the forums, scouring their help guides and being overly reliant on their search parameters in the hope that someone else has had the same problem as you. Indeed, there is a lot of support for that in the, a lot of the back end of TrueNAS when you're navigating the files to allow you to check that stuff out, which is good but can be very time consuming. Alternatively, maybe you want a commercial grade technical support line or you want to be able to raise a support ticket. Now, in order to do that in TrueNAS, you're either overly reliant on that community support or you go for a paid turnkey solution like the IX ones, which then have um, an area of uh, support and warranty behind them as you would expect from a commercial turnkey product, but also access to tiered support in silver, uh, sorry, bronze, silver and gold, which has phone lines and live chat. And it all breaks down into subscription services, which this is what I meant by TrueNAS being on the whole a free platform, but not completely free if you want to have the 
full experience. And that kind of commercial grade support may be beneficial for some, but if you were looking at TrueNAS to be this free platform where all your money went into the hardware, do anticipate that when you do need help and you do need support, there is going to be a slower response to that or a slower searching through the community support there to find those answers unless you're prepared to pay for it. And all of that talk of third-party clients and support clearly un uh, continues to underline that TrueNAS is still the more complex server option in the market right now. It is versatile, it is customizable, it is expandable, it is scalable. But there's no denying that it has a near effing vertical learning curve there. Unlike a lot of the soft brand options which vary in their level of complexity and user friendliness, with arguably Synology being the most user friendly, um, QNAP being the next in the roster followed by Asus Door and Terra Master and WD being easy but incredibly limited when it comes to TrueNAS very early doors you have so many configuration options thrown at you with very few kind of assisting wizards um, and uh, walkthroughs and counsellors these tools that can be built in to guide you through the process there are some and there are lots of hints and tips and little help me question marks dotted around but still nowhere near as diverse and helpful as any other platform and it has a huge degree of we're going to give you all of the options to choose from you better get this right first time which can be very off-putting for some users Finally, and this is largely down to ZFS more than anything else, resource consumption on the TrueNAS platform is just higher. Because of all the extra services and a lot of the kind of enterprise grade storage uh, capabilities that are built into it, even on a low end spec system, resource consumption of your CPU and memory resources are just going to be higher. Less so when it comes to power consumption, but again, higher memory consumption and higher CPU consumption for the average task, and I mean by that by domestic storage tasks, is going to mean a little bit more power consumption as well. That's why you find any TrueNAS system, be they pre built IX systems, or ones that you build yourself will always be less power efficient than turnkey solutions which are designed around more efficient hardware to start with so they've already got that integrated into their design both on a technical level and on a deployment level so remember that TrueNAS is a more aggressive power hungry platform so you're going to need to rack up a lot of those services in terms of hardware that you've gone particularly memory if you're going to take advantage of deduplication and inline compression these are things that need more memory and indeed a little bit more cpu on overall for a lot of that jail architecture too but this has been five reasons why you should consider integrating TrueNAS into your next uh, uh, private server setup and five reasons why you might want to give it a miss and go for something a little bit more user friendly. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We've got loads of guides on TrueNAS, a subject that I've waited a long time to explore alongside other NAS platforms. So stay tuned for them or go to the links in the description where we're going to way, way, way more detail on this platform and how it compares with the others. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe to learn more about this and other subjects in storage. Take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares. Fill out the form. Takes us a couple of days to get back to you. We don't do NAF or your email. We just want to help. Otherwise, I will see you next time.